lion's prey. Now is it Amy Johnson or little Mickey Mouse? No, it's just a country lad who's bringing down my house and his arms on Bradford. Now I ask you, is he any good? And then volley to Bradman. Ball well pitched, Bradman moves forward, drives. Cotton at cover tries to cut it off, but is beaten by the pace of the ball, and it races away for another four. Was a day in love with us. You can bring the sunshine wet. I can't give you anything but love. Back to the wall. What's going on, explorers and house lovers? All right, today I'm going to show you through this Adelaide time capsule built 1925, and it's pretty much still in original condition from that era. Now, the Aussies and Pommies who are watching, you may have picked the tune. Well, you probably did pick the tune in the intro, and that song's dedicated to Australia's favourite son, Sir Donald Bradman, the greatest cricketer ever, Australia's greatest sporting hero legend, probably Australia's greatest legend, full stop. The history of this home starts around the time that Don Bradman's career took off, 1928, with an Englishman who returned from World War I to live in Australia, and he first lived in this house in 1928, and his name was Walter Martin Minot, and this house remained in the Minot family right up until 2019. Found an awesome old newspaper inside, which is from 1934, and it references the Aussie cricket team going over to play the Ashes in England. But an Englishman moving into an Australian house right around the time where Bradman's career took off, I just had to reference Don Bradman and the Ashes. Anyway, this style home is actually considered a bungalow, although it is not quite your full-blown Californian bungalow style. And it's a great example of the homes that were transitioning out of World War I and away from the old Edwardian Victorian style villas. So if we blended this home here, which was built in 1915, and this bungalow, which was built in 1930, you'd probably come up with this home right here, the one we're looking at. Now I was able to photograph this place a few times, twice after the first time I explored it. And on the last occasion, I actually bumped into the neighbor that lives over the back fence. And he was quick to say right off the bat that he thinks this place is haunted because he used to be able to hear piano music coming from this house over his back fence at night and he said he heard it on several occasions didn't say who he thought it might be but he actually knew Warren Minot who was Walter's son Warren lived here with his wife Velma right up until 1989 and he also said that after Warren and Velma moved out the home was vacant for a long time um, he thinks there may have been a renter in there at some point but it's been vacant pretty much since they moved out. But the home was kept in their name up until recently, and I will elaborate more on that as the video goes. And just keep in mind, guys, that when we do get inside and explore this place, I'm actually not aware of the history that I'm telling you now. And with that said, I want to give a big shout out to Julianne Turner, who helped me dig up all the information that you will hear and see. Okay, as we're around the side of the house here, it looks as though we may have found an entry point. So I think you might enjoy this one, guys, as it's pretty much original and there's lots of retro to look at. All right, let's get into it. This home has not been altered. Now, a side window was open. I don't usually make a habit of getting through windows, but this place has got to be demolished soon. So that's a risk I'm willing to take on this one because this needs to be documented. Um, I've taken a quick walk through. That's how I know it's in completely original condition. So I'm going to show you guys and take a look around. Check out the colours. It 
So it's, um, again, that period that's transitioning away from the First World War. So it's got a bit of a mixture of the old um, Federation Villa and the Californian Bungalow. But look at this. The old power board and it has had an update circuit thing there and the power is still attached to this place but that's the original power board there the old bakelite switches Even the old curtains haven't been altered. Not sure if they're original, but they'd be close to, they'd have to be close. So that must have been just a little storage area, maybe a little bedroom. Check out those vintage chairs. Even in the original light, attached with the chains. Mm, I'll check the newspaper date. Nineteen ninety-three. There's an old Adelect hot water surface, probably from the fifties, even earlier, maybe forties. An old pie safe. Or at least an old crockery cutlery cabinet. Yeah, I think that one's more for your crockery as it's got no vents, no air vents. Still vintage. Got to be from the, that's possibly even the, from the 20s as well. That's yeah, 1993 too. So you must have laid out, or he or they or she, must have laid out the cupboards with the same newspaper. Yep, sounds about right, because Merv Hughes, if you're Australian, you know who Merv Hughes is. He was on that um, newspaper clipping there. Adelect number three. See, I had one of those in my old uh, deco units. Mine was a little bit different, though. 
Um, I'll put in a shot of mine now. Mine was a number three, but it was slightly different. Now that is a lino floor. It's got a very subtle pattern on it. It's pretty faded by the look. And that's green lino. So we enter the hallway. Beautiful grill up there. Check out the bathroom. Absolutely untouched and totally original. Look at that claw foot tub. piping too. And shower. Everything, light shade. So cool. That's actually a really high cabinet. Like if you're short, even if you're about five foot four, three or below, you probably wouldn't see into that mirror there. The old basin, just the one tap basin. Now the water mains are off. What a time capsule. Okay, we'll take a look in this bedroom first. That's a newer light shade, definitely. You pull down light switch. didn't come on. Um, it's a big thick carpet. Obviously there was a big uh, wardrobe there. It's been removed. They look like coffee, coffee jars. Yeah. I think they say Nestle. Well, one of them does anyway. You know, probably keeping them for the preserved fruits. Sure, if there's anything up there, I'm just pointing the camera up. No, it doesn't look like there is. There's an old doorbell. Big Ben. It's an electric one, wired in. All uh, right. Now this bedroom, this one had the window actually up about six inches. So. That's why I thought, why not just go in there and record it. Okay, what dates on these? For, um, this will give us an exact date of when this lino was laid down.
1934. Okay, that's the oldest paper I've found so far, I think. It was so cool to find this old newspaper, guys, and I was lucky enough to be able to fish out the actual front page from under the lino as we look at some of the snippets from it from here. And looking at the lino being pulled up here, this is typical of um, a pre-selvage assessment where they're checking the floorboards to see what condition they're in. But Julianne was able to dig up a land title from 1989, which also includes a Minot with the initials AT. So that kind of adds up that they may have transferred the home in 89 to maybe their children. But as we've seen from the newspapers in the cupboards in the kitchen, it says 1993. So someone was obviously in here after Warren and Velma moved out. And I was able to backtrack through the Google images of this place. And the only year I could see a car in the driveway or anything that resembled a residence was 2013 here. You can see the blue sedan. I think it's a Ford. It looks like a Ford Falcon. Maybe it was the relatives. But we're gonna find a few more things in the house that's gonna lead me into the uh, timeline of this place, the awesome history of the Minot family, and I'll uh, give you the full rundown when we get to those spots in the video, guys. Okay, so that was bedroom number two. So many nice colors in here, because that's like a mauve purple. It's like a, a light yellow. And that's got its own bronzy color as well. Okay, this has got the fireplace, so it would be a living room. His rat sack. Rat poison being placed around. There's the original, that's the original lino right there. Venetian blinds for this one. Now that would have to be the last bedroom. Oh, check it out. I didn't see that before. That's an old valve radio, I think. Yep. SA, Queensland, Victoria, New South Wales. Looks like the top's been taken off it. Old tube radio valve. may have originally had stained glass but that um, may not be the case either now I got a quick glimpse of this before it's an old trunk of something like it's an old travelling trunk Very, very old. 
Oh. How cool is that? Oh yeah, there's your like your coat, your coat hanger, your trouser hanger. Jocks and socks. And uh, shoes and what else? So yeah, that's it. That's that would have to be a hundred years old itself, probably more. Who knows? That may have even been to a world war or two. Individuals entitled to the Victory Medal and or British War Medal granted under Army Orders. So it's fair to say this old trunk has travelled across the world and belongs to a War Medal recipient being Private Walter Martin Minot. Okay, it's probably a good time to get into the history of the Minots here. So we will start with Walter, where it all began. Now, Walter was born in 1896 in Roxwell, Essex, England. Uh, he was one of four sons, three brothers. One was Ernest, uh, Arthur and George were the other two. Now we scroll down here, resident of England still up till 1911. Now we get to 1914. He was shipped over to Australia, to Sydney. Obviously, this is the start of the war. And even more interesting, he was shipped back in November of that same year to England. Obviously, to do with the war, as his military service was from 1914 to 1925. Now, along with that medal I showed uh, just before, he also received an award, a UK Campaign Medal Award, which goes to... World War I merchant seaman. Now I looked up what merchant seaman meant and First World War merchant navy. The term merchant navy refers to a nation's commercial shipping and crews. During the First World War merchant ships were requisitioned to act as transports, hospitals, ships and cargo carriers. So I would say after 1919, when the war ended, he continued to serve as a merchant seaman. All right. So, and as you can see here, he, there was a departure from London, England, probably when he was wrapping up his services. Now, this is when he came back to Australia as he married his wife, Grace Elsie in 1926 and as we go across to a document here as I said in the intro of the video Walter acquired the home in 1928 right here so you can see here he was the attendant and his previous address was Davies Terrace, Nailsworth, which is not too far from this address, which is in Blair Athol. And I will show you exactly where Walter lived. And these homes are returning World War One soldier homes. They're single front bungalows. These were built by the State Bank. Um, the returning soldiers got a cheap loan, obviously for service to the country. So Walter lived in this one, number nine, Davies Terrace. Just a simple little bungalow. And as you can see, there's a row of them all along this street, built specifically for the soldiers. So he moved from this address over to here in Blair Athol, the one, the house we're in. Now in 1931, son Warren was born. Now this is where I found out the information from the neighbour over the back. 
He knew Warren and Warren was born in the house, actually inside the house, which home births were not uncommon, particularly in the Great Depression. Back to the history here, death of father, Martin Minot in 1935. And we scroll down, death of brother Arthur, 1954, death of brother George in 1960. Now the death of his wife, Grace Elsie, in 1969. And we can see here, Grace Elsie passed away on the 2nd of April, 1969. And only months later, in 1970, on the 9th of February, Walter Martin passed away. Only months apart, perhaps he died of a broken heart once Grace, Elsie, passed away. Okay, the death of Walter in 1970 leads to, I presume, when Warren, his son, took over ownership of the home. Now, we do know Warren was married to Velma May, but there's no records of what year they married. And as discussed with the neighbour, he knew Warren and they lived in this dwelling up until 1989. Now, I was able to find out where Warren and Velma moved to, and it was into this home, and they actually lived out their last days in this home. I was able to find their grave, or their memorial plot, and it's in the same Anglican area of the uh, cemetery as Walter and uh, Grace Elsie. Warren Angus Minot died 30th of the 7th, 2019, aged 88, and Velma May, she passed away only months after again. Once Warren passed away in July, the home we're exploring sold for 910,000. Now that is because it's a double lot. After Warren passed away, the property was sold, and yes, it was sold to developers. Now Velma May died the 14th of October, the property they moved to, this one, was sold and we could assume that the relatives sold them. Between the two properties they made quite a uh, quite a bit of money. This property wasn't sold to developers, I've been past this place and there's another family actually living in it. And I guess this is a great insight and also it rounds out the timeline of where the Minots, or at least the immediate Minots that we can research where they lived and where they ended up and where they passed away. Now, one other a little bit of information I do want to go back to is the death of Grace Elsie. And she did pass away at Blair Athol, so she did pass away in this home. And just going back to the neighbor's reference to the piano music, so I guess we could ask ourselves, did Grace Elsie used to play the piano? Was there a piano in this house at some point? And of course, there could be some other simple explanation like the neighbours playing some classical music, I guess, but it's something interesting to think about. Hopefully, that gets saved. I like these old um, uh, floor protectors, log protectors. I think that's what they are. Stop, stop the logs from rolling out onto the rug. That's nice. Board it up that one. Okay, so there is another newspaper. that one. John Martins. The selvage process has started. All the floorboards have gone and uh, the door trims. Now that was the room the trunk, the nice old trunk was in and the trunk's actually still in the kitchen. But it looks like um, 
whoever's doing the salvage is lining that up to save because the mantelpiece from that fireplace is in the kitchen as well. So I would say within a week or two, this will be knocked over. It was always going to happen. What a shame. So original. They haven't got to the bathroom yet. I haven't taken anything out, that is. Claw foot tub still there. All the old pipes. Shower head. And there's the mantle I was talking about. So they'll save that. There's the trunk. I really hope that ends up well, with someone who is going to appreciate it and um, maybe end up in a uh, collection. Yeah, so saving, looks like we're going to keep the old Bakelite switches and maybe that wall cabinet. They've taken all the uh, back wall off of the lean to. All right. Well, depending whether I get back here or not in time, this could be the last I see of it, so. Farewell, old girl. Okay, I'll start to wrap it up here guys, but at least we can see there was a decent salvage process undertaken on the old girl. And you can see they're at least going to save the bricks on that side of the wall. And you can see the excavator coming into view there. And I think you know where this is leading guys. The old girl was indeed demolished only a few days after these photos. And it was purchased by developers, so no doubt there's going to be a new complex of units or townhouses go up here. You can see one lonely chair from the kitchen remaining and because everything had been knocked down and everything had been salvaged I actually took this chair for myself so I'm proud to say that I've got one cool piece of history of this old home and I think this home and the history of the Minot family it really deserved the story being told so I really hope you appreciate that history that I put in there guys and with that said Rest in peace to the Minot members of the family that have passed away and lived in this home. And of course, last but not least, rest in peace old girl, 58 Manual Avenue, Blair Athol, 1925 to 2021. Alright guys, that's it from me and this video. On to the next one. I'll see you there. Cheers, bye.